Hi friends, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build a device to measure the real capacity of almost any battery. For example, look at this brand new lithium ion battery. I want to show you something interesting about it. Look at the rated capacity here. 8800 milliamp. Looks fantastic, but is that, is that true? This device will help us to measure the real capacity. So if you want to make one of these, stay tuned, I will show you how. Okay, what you see here is the schematic diagram of the device. As you can see, we can divide the circuit in two main parts. One is the Arduino Nano board and some external components such as LCD and push buttons and another part is the constant current load circuit. I will start with the circuits which are connected to Arduino Nano board. The board's supply voltage will be connected to the P1 connector. Be careful not to apply more than 9 volts to the input because I've used the regulator of the Arduino Nano board. So voltages that exceed 9 volts would impose stress on the chip and its overheating might damage it. Capacitors C1 and C2 are used to filter the supply voltage. These three push buttons are used to increase or decrease the current value or reset the board. R1 and R2 are pull-up resistors and C3 and C4 are used to debounce the possible push button noises. You will connect a 5V buzzer to the P2 connector. The R3 limits the buzzer current. I've used a 2x16 LCD as a display. The connection type of the LCD and Arduino is 4 bits. R6 resistor limits the backlight current of the LCD. R4 is a standing 10K potentiometer to adjust the LCD contrast. Now I'm gonna explain the constant current load section. The Arduino board generates a PW impulse which is injected into the R5 C7 network. R5 and C7 combination makes a low pass filter to build a DC voltage out of the PW impulse. The output of the RC filter is applied to the second op amp of the LM. 358 chip. I've captured this on the oscilloscope. The first channel shows the PW impulse and the second channel shows the filter's output. The R5 resistor usually limits the current, however, on the other side, the op amp input draws a very small current. Theoretically, it is zero. The op amp's configuration is voltage follower. The output of the voltage follower gets injected into the first op amp of the LM358. This op amp in a company with R7 and Q2 built a constant current load circuit. Therefore, so, fa so far we have built a PWM controllable constant current load. The R7 defines the top current limit. Don't forget to install a, bit, a big heatsink on the Q2 because it gets really hot. You will connect the battery to the P3 connector. Use short and thick wires for this purpose. C5 and C6 capacitors are used to reduce the noises coming from the constant current load section. This path is connected to the, is connected to the Arduino's analog to digital converter. I mean A0 pin. Therefore, you must be careful to not to apply more than 5 volts to the battery input. I use the Symaxis component libraries for Arduino Nano LM358 and IRF3710 because first, these libraries are free and second, they follow industrial IPC standards. Using pre-made libraries like this significantly reduces the design time. You can also check the prices of components from different distributors. For example, if we search for the LM358 and click here, 
we can examine its price and quantity from Mauser, Digikey, Funnel, and other distributors. To access the full article, please check the description and reference links. This picture shows the designed PCB layout. It's a two layers PCB board and all components packages are deep. Pretty easy for everyone to build one of these. This is the first prototype of the device on a semi-homemade PCB board. This is the Arduino code. I assume the 540 milliamps current limit is enough for most applications. However, if you believe this is not enough, you can reduce the R7 value and recalculate this array. Also, I've set the battery cutoff voltage at 3.2 volts. It means after the battery's voltage reached this level, then the constant current load will be disabled and calculations will be made. You can modify it here if you like. Okay, welcome to the test bench. I have connected the power supply and oscilloscope to the board and this oscilloscope probe to the PWM output and the, from the battery connection to the power supply. Now I'm gonna reset the board to show you from the start point. Press the third button and this text on the screen. Uh, let me find the best position maybe here. Yeah, restart. This is the welcome message. And now I can adjust the current. Look at the power supply and oscilloscope. As I increase the current, the duty cycle of the PWM increases. Now it goes to 400 and 540 is the maximum. Do you see the PWM? Now I gonna press the second button to decrease the current. Let's I decrease this and stay on 200 milliamps and show you something. If this is a true constant current load circuit, then by changing the input voltage, the current value should not change, isn't it? Let me decrease the voltage. As you see, there is no change in the current. Let me go to 2 volts. The current still remain intact. This is the minimum. But current is fix, fixed. Let me increase the voltage again. No change in the current, still 200 milliamps. This is exactly what we want to measure the battery capacity. Now if I long press the first button, I mean the up button, then the procedure starts. Alright, now we are sure that the device works flawlessly and we are ready to actually test a battery. But you must fully charge the battery with the constant current and constant voltage power supply, something like this board which I explained you in the past. I will put the link of the video in the description. Alright, now we are ready to actually test the battery. I put the battery in a holder and I use this power supply to provide the supply voltage to the board. So I press the reset button to start from the beginning. This is the welcome message. Now I am gonna set the current. I planned for 500 milliamps. So I increase the current. 400 and now this is 500. Now I long press this first button and the process starts. Wow, something smells fishy here. A full battery should start from 4.2 volts, but this battery suddenly dropped to 4.08 volts. This is not a good sign. So we will stay to see how long this battery would last under the 500 milliamps load. Thirteen minutes passed and the battery voltage is 3.95 volts. Thirty-one minutes passed and the battery voltage is 3.92 volts.
One hour and 37 minutes passed and the battery voltage is 3.75 volts. Ok, now we are going to pass 2 hours and the battery voltage is around 3.68 volts. So, mission accomplished. After 2 hours and 22 minutes, the battery voltage reached to 3.2 volts and the true capacity is around 1200 milliamps. So friends, that's it for today. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a big like. Also check the video description. Catch you next time.